Hey guys, welcome back to Clueless Crafts. Today we're back again for another clay animal tutorial. If you haven't seen my two previous ones, I'll leave a link down below for you to watch later. For this video, keep watching and see how I make these animals. Alright, first things first, we're going to start off with a ball of white clay and roll it out into a sort of egg shape. It should look something like this. Next, we're going to take two small white balls and we're going to flatten them out and those will be the mouse's ears. We're also going to take a ball of pink clay, split it into two, roll it into two smaller balls and flatten them out onto the ear. Then just place them on top of the mouse's head. Next, take a small pink ball, flatten it out, and cut it in half. Then we're going to use our knife and create two little lines, and those will be the mouse's feet. And just place the mouse on top of them. With some white clay, we're going to roll out a log, cut it in half, and those are going to be the mouse's arms. With a ball of pink clay, we're going to split that in half and connect the two pieces together. Now with the knife, just make two cuts and those will be the mouse's paws. Now we're going to make a seed with some light and dark brown clay. Just flatten out a ball of clay and pinch the end until it starts looking like a seed. Something like that. Just going to take some liquid sculpey, put it on the mouse so we can connect the seed, and then we're just going to put the arms right on top of it. And a little pink nose. Then with a ballpoint tool, we're just going to make indents for the eyes. With a ball of pink clay, we're going to roll that out into a tapered log and attach it to the back of the mouse and that'll be its tail. Then we're just going to take some black clay and roll it into small balls for the eyes and add a little mouth detail as well. And that's our finished mouse and this is after baking. Next we're going to take a ball of light brown clay and kind of squish it down into a teardrop shape. And this is going to be the body of our hedgehog. Then with some brown clay, I suggest you don't use this one. This was actually a leather effect female, which was very breakable. And just for comparison, this is regular clay, so it's a lot harder to work with, so I suggest not using the leather, which I didn't think would be a big deal. But anyway, we're just rolling them out into little cone shapes, as these will be the spikes on the body. And just make a ton of them. Then just put some liquid sculpey onto the body and start adding the cones on top. With the bigger ones towards the center and smaller ones towards the edges. And start from the back and work your way to the front. With the nose, we're just going to flip it up to create an angle and add a little brown ball of clay. Then we're going to make indents for the eyes and add some black clay in those. And this is done, and this is it after baking. Next, with a gray ball of clay, we're going to slightly flatten it out and press one side against the table to create a flat surface. Then we're going to take a small black ball of clay and make it into a dome shape by pressing it against the table. Then just place the black clay on top, flat sides together, and we're going to roll it against the table to connect the two, and it should look like this. Then with a white piece of clay, we're going to flatten it out and cut out a U shape, and this is going to be the penguin's face. So just uh, smooth out the edges, cut it down to shape if you need to, which I ended up needing to. And after you're done that, it should look like this, and we're just going to place it on the penguin's face and push it down. And I'm just using a q-tip with acetone to clean off any marks. Then just adding a beak with a small triangle piece of black clay. Next, the arms. We're just going to roll out some grey clay into some teardrop shapes and rip off any excess clay from the top if you need. Then we're just connecting that to the sides of the penguin. And I'm using a tool to smooth out the edges. And just do the same thing for the other side. For the feet, we're taking a small ball of black clay, flattening it, and cutting it in half. And those will just be our feet, our flippers. And make two indents on the face, and add little black balls for the eyes. And this is our finished penguin, and this is it after baking. Next up we have a giraffe, so I just took some brown and yellow clay and mixed it together to create the color I was looking for. Just taking a piece off for the head later. 
then we're taking the rest and shaping it into an L shape, but kind of a diagonal in the corner. Now I'm using a tool to make an indent in the bottom, and that will be the giraffe's legs. Then I'm just pinching them into shape. And I'm also taking a little piece off of the back, and I'm going to use that as the giraffe's tail later. And using a knife, I'm just using that to separate the legs and shape them more with a triangular tool. And now I'm just adding that tail back. You can smooth that out with a tool, but I think fingers are better. Now I'm taking the extra clay we had, ripping off another piece, and this will be the giraffe's head. Kind of make it into a triangle square shape. I ended up making it a little bit more square than you see now. Taking the rest of the clay, roll them into two small balls and flatten them out, and those will be the ears. I kind of put them lower than I wanted to, so it kind of looks like a dog, but don't worry, I fix that later. With a little bit of brown clay, roll it into a log, cut it in half, and those will be its tusks, I think? I don't know what they're called. Now just some balls of black clay for the eyes. And finally, to attach the head and- oh, earthquake? Nope, that didn't work. Let's try that again, but this time securing the back. And now I'm fixing the ears, so they look a little better. I didn't really look at what a giraffe looked like before this, so I'm kind of going off of memory, which is very little. Next, with some brown clay, we're just going to rip it up into little pieces, roll it out, and kind of make it into a flat, square shape. And I'm just placing it on the giraffe randomly. You could actually look at a picture and follow the pattern it has, but I didn't. And this took a lot longer than I thought it would, so allot yourself more time than you think. And I'm also just taking a second to fix the ears a little bit, because they weren't looking like ears. Finally, the last piece. Now time- oh, you didn't see that. Now time for baking. And this is it completed. Finally, we're going to make a snake, so take a ball of blue clay and roll it out into, you guessed it, a snake shape. Pat down the head when you see fit to make it more angled. And once you're happy with the shape, we're going to take some dark and light blue clay, flatten it out a bit, and then we're going to rip it into small pieces. And once you have all your pieces, we're going to take the light clay and put it on the dark clay, and then squish them together. And you're going to do that for all of the pieces. Now this is going to end up being the snake's pattern, so once you're done, just stick it all down the length of the snake, focusing it on the top. And once you have it on, just roll it out to connect everything and make it flush with the snake. Now we're just cutting the mouth, it looks a little bit creepy. Oh, I don't know, I got these scars. <laughs> Sorry. Anyway, we're putting some red clay in the mouth for the tongue and just cutting it out. Not the tongue, the clay. <laughs> Then just add some black clay for the eyes, and now we're going to contort our snake into whatever position we want. It went nice and curvy. And once you're happy with it, it is time for baking. And this is what the snake looks like after being baked. And these are the finished product! Let me know down in the comments below which animal was your favorite. I love hearing about that stuff from you guys. If you enjoyed watching, don't forget to subscribe and get notifications for when I put out new craft videos. But other than that, hope you guys have a great rest of your day, and I'll see you all later. Bye!